Hi everyone, Jim with CD Nova Instruments again. And um, today we're looking at the, again, at the 42IQ Knox Analyzer, but today I'm looking at the menu, how to get through the menu options, the calibration screen, the data screen, and settings. Um, this analyzer, I just turned this on, so it's still in, it's still in the warm-up mode. That's why it's showing uh, zeros here. Once it finishes warm-up, temperature stabilizes, <clears throat> and it starts showing uh, uh, data in these three rows here. So this screen, it is a touch screen, and uh, it's pretty simple to navigate. It has uh, calibration, data, and settings. Uh, there's a home button up here. If you get lost in the menus, you can just simply hit this home button. It'll take you back to this main screen. And there's the back arrow as well. As you get in through these screens, you can go back uh, into the previous screen. There's a password lock if you want to lock out the uh, functions. Uh, alarms menu and uh, favorites menu and then the date time as well. Uh, looking, let's go up and look at the calibration screen. It's uh, right there. And in that screen it's got the calibrate backgrounds, calibrate span coefficients. Uh, you can do a zero span schedule uh, for daily spans and advanced calibration. So if we look at the calibrate backgrounds uh, this is just simply how you'd go in and do the zero background adjust. Um, so here it's showing Calibrate NO background, uh, previously 4.2, and then the Calibrate NOx background, 4.7. So if you went in, just like you would on the i-series, we're going to do the NO background adjust, and then the NOx background adjust. So looking at the NO, it shows you the target NO concentration, zero, current NO concentration, zero. Uh, the background is currently 4.2 and it has calculated in our background 4.8. So if you press calibrate at this point, it would just simply zero adjust the analyzer. Uh, if we go back one screen, we do the same to the NOx, calibrate NOx background. And again, you just hit calibrate and it would do the uh, NOx background adjust. <clears throat> now we can go back two screens, look at the calibrate span coefficients. So you, at this point, you'd have uh, sample gas, calibration gas, sorry, going into the instrument. And you'd have your high point that you want to adjust to for the NO NOx. Uh, here's the coefficient for calibrate NO span coefficient, 0.996. There's the NO2 coefficient and the NOx coefficient. So if you wanted to calibrate the NO, uh, you'd simply go in here, edit the number that you wanted. It was previously uh, 800 ppb. So you just simply go in there and type in, you know, the number that you're trying to reach in PPB or PPM, depending on the analyzer, if it's high level or low level. And then you just simply hit calibrate right here. And that would adjust the, uh, the NO channel. And just simply go back, calibrate NOx, and do the same thing. Edit the NOx concentration here, punch in the value that you want, Hit enter, it'll save it. I'm just going to hit the back arrow and uh, then hit calibrate. So that's the simple way of adjusting the NO NOx. Calibrate NO coefficient and calibrate NOx coefficient. Okay. So it's pretty straightforward, very simple to, to use. So just simply in, in the calibration screen again, calibrate backgrounds and span coefficients. And again, you can set up a zero span schedule here as well. You can go in and change the, uh, the next time, the zero duration, span duration, purge time, uh, averaging time. And there's quite a bit you can do in here, 24 hour. There's more, so this one has background calibration disabled, span calibration disabled, zero span ratio one to one. And go back here. So that's just simply the uh, zero span schedule. Advanced calibration, you can do a manual calibration on this instrument. You can adjust the backgrounds, uh, you can manually adjust them. Go back, you can adjust the span coefficients. So there's a manual adjustment option on the uh, backgrounds and span coefficients here. Here it'll give you the calibration history. And uh, so as this unit's been calibrated, it keeps a log. The event, result, the target, 
and the date and time it was adjusted as well. So it was an auto background, Cal PMT, and you can go up and down with the arrows over here as well and look at the data. You can scroll up to see the uh, previous calibrations as well. So lots going on in that menu as well. So that was just the calibration menu. Then you've got the data menu. And the great feature about this analyzer is I can view data log last hour, 24 hours, uh, user defined time, I can go pick up the data, and advanced data setup, we'll look at that. But if I look at the last, uh, last hour of data, I can go graph, see this word graph above each column right here. I can simply touch that and it will graph my data. And it's just showing this, this one plot here going across. And you can see it, it'll update. It'll actually move from right to left. It'll actually move across as it's updated. So I can look at my cals. If I'm doing a multi-point cal, my, you know, my high, mid, and low, it'll, it'll graph, graph it out here. I don't have to go look at another external data logger that this is attached to. I can actually see it from the front panel, panel of this analyzer. Wonderful. And you can do that with any of the parameters. So that was that was converter temp. This is you know this is instrument temp right here, you know, 22 degrees Celsius. You can uh, graph the flow as well. There's the flow, and of course the NO and the NOx channels as well. You can graph those items in here as well. So that's the just view last hour of data. And you can do the last 24 hours. You can do a user defined and pick out the time that you want to start looking at the data as well and you have advanced data setup you can do data logging setup and uh, select data logging values whether you want temperatures flows no nox no2 that sort of thing and you can erase the data as well streaming data setup select variable variables and uh, show timestamp enables and show labels as well on the back and that's all in the data screen right here so a great way to view the data right from the front panel without having to go to an externally connected data logger which we usually have been doing settings <clears throat> a lot happening in here health check instrument settings the USB drive, when you want to do the data download dump, you'll use this feature. Measurement settings, configuration, user contact information, communications and security access levels if you want to lock out the operator. Um, measurement settings, averaging time, gas mode, gas units, PPV, PPM, range mode selection, um, single auto dual, Averaging time, 60 seconds. Range setting, uh, NL range, 50 PPB, NL2 range, 1000, NOx range, 50. Gas mode, sample, zero, expand. So if you have the zero span solenoid option in this analyzer, whether it be the external solenoid valves off the back panel or the permeation oven option that's where you would trigger it gas units ppb ppm percent micrograms per cubic meter it's all here you can dilution ratio screen well it was set one to one so i set to one you can make it 50 to one 100 to one advanced measurement settings um, here you have reaction chamber settings compensation auto manual extended ranges and pressure calibration Auto manual mode, so it's set for NO NOx. You can hear the valve switching every 10 seconds as well, NO NOx. So we would change that, reaction chamber settings. So this one, this screen is where you would go and do the coarse gain adjust. If you wanted to adjust the PMT, you would go into this screen. Continue to PMT calibration screen. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you're putting your high point of gas in, it was saying, say it was reading 700 ppb and you wanted it to read 900 and it's just too far for the calibration adjust to reach, <clears throat> you simply touch this screen. This is the same as on the I-Series where you'd be going into the PMT voltage setting and going up and down with the, the arrows 
this screen it actually says minus 772 volts here you simply touch that screen and you can punch in what you want the PMT to read so it's not it's no longer an up and down arrow it's actually you have to dial in the number so the negative say I wanted to read 772 and then I would just simply hit enter here then it would read 772 and you'd see the response change on your calibration gas up here as well so that's how you do the manual core scan adjust now it's a bit different than doing it on the i series where we went to that in the service mode and went to the pmt setting and then we had the choice of an up and down arrow to, to adjust that voltage that minus you know 700 volts up and down now it's just simply go in manually punch in the number we're looking for and hit enter and, it, and then you'll see the response change on top so that's the manual PMT adjust. You've also got input board calibration as well that you can go do on this screen. Pressure calibration and then your compensation for your temperature pressures as well. Uh, USB drive. Uh, you can, yeah, if, so if you plug in a USB into this unit uh, it'll, it'll sense the USB drive and it'll say download data to USB drive. When you hit that you can download all the data that is stored in the data logger to that thumb drive and, it'll, and then you can take it into an Excel spreadsheet and uh, plot it in the columns that you want. So that's just a quick overview of the 42IQ NOx analyzer and that's the, the calibration screen and then back data screen and back and then the settings. So there's quite a bit of stuff that you can do with this analyzer just from this touch screen. Looking at some of these hot buttons down here, this is, um, if you see this triangle with the exclamation mark, that is the, uh, there's a fault, there's an alarm, it's still in warm up right now. So if we touch that, it'll take us to status and alarms. You can select that, I can go to my NO2 converter, and it's, it shows red, it's not quite up to temperature. It's a uh, low alarm is 300 and it's at 298, 299 now. So it's very close to uh, reaching that 300, which is just on the edge of doing right now. <clears throat> when it does that, it clears, uh, that red will go away, and that, that alarm will, will cease, as it just did. You can see it's right on the edge. 300 is kind of right on the very edge of it. 300.5, and now it's starting to hold it now. So if I go back, I can see and there's an alarm on my reaction chamber and it's the temperature again, it's 47 Celsius and it's looking for a minimum of 48 Celsius. So it's very close and that will clear like you saw on the last screen, that red will go away and that, uh, that alarm will, will cease as well. Uh, there's an ozonator alarm, uh, concentration alarm, Flow and pressure as well. Low alarm, high alarms. So, tremendous amount of stuff that you can monitor on this for, for the alarms menu as well. And the favorite screen, you can actually go into this screen and have a uh, button set up for quick access. There's nothing set up in here right now. But you can program this to go to quick, uh, quick jump buttons to into other menu items as you want. And then there's the password. You can set security levels, change security access, change full access if you want to lock it out as well. Uh, this thing just blinked. It went to a green check mark. So when the uh, all the alarms are cleared, this triangle will disappear, and a green check mark will show up here as well, as it just about did. So if we go back in and look, there it is there. So what has happened is the reaction temper reaction temperature has now reached its 48 degrees chamber temp. So it's above that low alarm of 48 right there. So it's 48.14. So that when you walk up to this analyzer and you see a green check mark, you know that everything is working. Everything is there's no alarms. But if you wanted to look at them, if you're in this screen and you want to check them, you just simply touch it and you can go to status alarms and see what's going on. So that's a quick overview. That's the 42IQ NOx analyzer. Uh, there's three simple buttons, calibration, data, settings, and uh, it will take you into everything plus a lot more. Uh, 
for calibrating the unit, looking at the data, and setting measurement options as well. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. Thank you.